All right, as you can see, Project Overland behind me, so I'm back in Sydney. It's been a couple of weeks since the show. Uh, really, really excited. The car is getting started, so all the modifications, uh, everything. Uh, first things first, it's not registered. So we are going to do the GVM upgrade, track correction before registration, uh, because I'm getting the Terrain Tamer Parabolics with the multi-drive true tracker correction. Uh, this is going to allow me um, to register it after, afterwards without engineering because it's got the second stage manufacturing certificate uh, and then we can go on with other mods after that. First things first, we're actually going to take it to the weigh bridge and weigh it um, stock as a rock and just sort of see where, where we're at so we have a baseline to start with and uh, then we're going to get started, started on the uh, yeah, track correction GBM. Excited! So just like that, the hub is back on. Um, brakes are just getting put on now. It's actually kind of surprised me how simple it is. It's obviously not something I still want to do myself, um, having to get the angle grinder. But uh, it is really quite a simple process. Um, and, you know, I think simplicity is good design <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, so really impressed. I've got one side is corrected on the car after only yeah, a couple of hours of work and excited. <laughs> All right, Steve. So the troopy is behind me now, getting work done on it as we speak. Yep. Uh, so one side has already been done with the track correction. Yep. So we've got the multi-drive true tracker correction. So we'll we just run through and actually explain sort of how it works um, and sort of all the bits and, and pieces and that go with it yeah. and why. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so things to note about this is it is not a diff replacement. It's essentially a diff extension. Correct, a widening. Widening, yep. yep. So, uh, Which is also compatible with a GVM upgrade. Yes. To a, to a certain point. And then if you want to go for the really high GVM upgrades, that's when you, you really look at doing the, the diff replacement system. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting 79s and you're sort of going around that four ton mark, yeah. that's when you would probably want to start considering yep. replacing the diff. But for me personally, I'm Troopies. going to try and keep the Troopy around 3.5. Yep. Um, in between 3.5 and 3.6 loaded with people in it um, because I don't want another four tonne troopy rolling around Australia. I want to try and keep it fairly light. Keep it neat. This GVM upgrade I'm going to be going for is the 3780. Correct. Uh, which I think is a good good range for the troopy. Yep. I don't think, yeah, if you can keep it you know, under that, then I think you're doing pretty well. And, and, and this morning, the the, uh, the Waybridge ticket come in at 23... 23 uh, 2,360. Yeah, 2,360. So, as a, a raw car, yep, with no work, no tyres changed or anything like that. Yep. Um, so whilst the GVM, uh, whilst there's still a lot of margin left, the GVM still almost a necessity. Yeah. Well, the 3350, um, it is hard to keep it under that. If you're doing yep. your full touring setup with your rear bar and your bigger tyres, which and we're rims. doing, it, all that sort yep. of stuff, the roof yep. conversion. As you say, bigger wheels, the fit yeah. out in the back, the rear bar, and it's it's spare or spares. Yeah, we'll get two. over that three three five oh no worries. Yeah. Yeah, so no worries. it's a really important process to consider. And, and with the track correction, a lot of people talk about: is it necessary? Yep. Do, do I need to to do it? And I think it's a it's all up to the individual and what they're going to do. Absolutely, it's a use case basis. Yeah, and people talk about driving on sand. It's not only sand. It can yeah. be 
the tracks that you've been in in yeah. LC, it can it can be a dry river bed. It's you know it's that where you want to feel you feel the bum of the car sort of yeah. dropping down into the tracks. But but I've heard people just even on road behaviour, um, like these are still you know solid front axle. They still wander around the road. I mean not yeah. quite like a forty, but uh, they yeah. still wander a little bit. And with this track uh, sorry with the dip, the rear track, yeah. probably even more so. So I think that'll probably fix it up. I think and, yeah. I, and the funny thing is even ruts in the in the in the road you know yeah. like the typical divots that are created in the road you f you do feel them you feel it sort of wanting to jump in a little bit so yeah. the point is is it necessarily is it necessary probably not and a lot of people are saying probably not um but it is an awesome uh really nice to have awesome bit of yeah. kit the process is really good you're not you're not really um compromising the vehicle or the diff or yep. the bearings because all that's been engineered to be in those new positions. Yep. Um, so the, the the process and the weight carrying capacity of the whole kit is awesome and is it worth doing? I, I honestly would say yes. And not to mention fully doing. legal in all states. Yep, so there's two processes yep. that. Yeah, it can, it can be done, if you've got an older car, it can be done uh, post rego. So you can do it after rego and have it engineered in your state. Mm -hmm. Um, but you could also have the opportunity to do a pre-rego and that means that the, the, the car or the engineering of this system is, is engineered across Australia. Yeah, um, which is what I wanted, just yeah. to make it easier down the track yeah. if you don't want to sell it or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, if you're that, selling just... the vehicle or you're moving into state, you know, people talk about, you know, just about the selling yep. side of it, it's yourself. If you move into state to do some work and you have to have it registered in that new state, it makes that whole pre process much easier yep. as well. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, and as I said, fully legal. And I mean, if you know, if you think about doing your, your spaces or people do offset rims, I mean, there's extra stress and bearings, yep. um, legalities, legalities um, yeah. everything like that. So and if you want, uh, well, this is the, the cheapest fully engineered. Yep. So the cheapest one you can get yep. as opposed and, to your and different placements and everything like that. Yeah, it, absolutely. And, and the thing with the legalities, look, no one's, even the experts aren't, aren't necessarily experts in some of these things. You know, yeah, with what's okay yeah. and what's not okay. There's yeah. a lot of conjecture. I think it is just, pretty confusing. Yeah, You're like yeah, it is a pretty convoluted moving around. Just it. take the opinion that spaces are not allowed. I wouldn't go space. You, wouldn't, using yeah. offset rims is not awesome. Even just as a user, having different different uh, rim offsets for your spares yeah. well, and your rotations. My, I had an Adrian our recent trip. He um got a big bolt through his tire in the gib, um, and he had to put. A uh, different rim on the back, which had no offset because yep. he has neg 50s, yep. and uh, he noticed the difference. He yeah, said, "Yeah, right. I actually really noticed the difference of having that on one, one side." And that's on one side. Yeah. And he said, "I, I really did notice yeah. it," uh, so which, was, I think, which was interesting. I, I think for anyone who's considering it, you either do it or you don't. Don't go halfway with some of those other. Yeah, options. I agree. Don't go halfway that's, with it. That's just... that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, one thing that kind of struck me uh, with this whole kit is just the instructions. You oh. got all the bits and pieces with yeah. it. It's good quality gear. Um, and you look, you are sort of, so the, the process you're moving, uh, wheel comes off, yep. uh, hub comes off, brakes, everything. Every, everything's down removed. Down the stub axle. Yep. Uh, stub axle is r removed, is, yep. is, is cut, literally cut off. Yep. Um, they do supply compressors. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it should be all right. It will be going for so, they, they do supply uh, a shim uh, or like a, like a template yep. a jig that you use to, for where, where it's set as the cutoff point. Yep. Um, every, everything that's needed is in extended brake lines, like the, the, the rigid brake lines are, uh, are supplied. Yep. Um, and we've got to remember that it's 55 mil widening each side. Is it 55? 55, 55. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, that's big, isn't it? So it's a, it, it is a big widening and, and hence, the actual widening part of the of the correction kit is that that's exactly the same as the Toyota stub. We're essentially cutting that yep. part off on the existing, and then the remaining part is going in is is embedded into the housing, and it's all bolted on. Yeah, but it's you know factory hub. It's factory obviously brakes and brake lines have to change because yep. you are widening. Of widening. It, but everything else, everything was the same. Your um, bearings the are the same. Yeah, which is which is great. Yeah. Which and is you're awesome. not, yeah. unlike using a, a offset rim, uh, you're not you're not moving that that load carrying uh, line of your yeah. bearings. It's still in the factory position. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just a beautiful, 
beautifully machined bit of, bit of equipment. Done, yeah, I did notice like the quality's great. Um, everything down to the instructions, how to install it and everything. Yeah. Like it's just it's just a really good kit. Yep. Um, so multi drive also do diff replacements if you're looking for something a bit heavier. Yep. Um, where they actually modify the factory diff. Um, but yeah, as a uh, a simple option and sort it's of, a it's a yeah. relatively easy for the guys to know what they. So it's a workshop. Um, it's a it's a workshop yeah. installation. It's not yeah. a DIY installation. Yeah. But when I say it's an easy install, you're not changing a whole lot of stuff. No. The equipment goes on first time, yeah. first go, works really well, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's yeah. One just, side's already done. Yeah. It's already done one side. Yeah. And um, I just want to say these fellas are they're pretty pedantic. So I've just been noticing. Um, just his attention to detail yeah, and, and making sure it's very clean and neat. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's been good to watch. And, and again, with the, um, as you said, the instructions, from our point of view, the, the professionalism of the kit is awesome. Yeah. Like it's just a fantastic uh, piece of equipment to work through all the time. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, I'll tell you, I'm really excited to get it on. And then uh, probably tomorrow and the next day we'll be doing GVM upgrade, the terrain tamer parabolics. Yep, GVM upgrade will be going on after we do the, the track correction. Yep. And Which uh, I'd like to note, I have got as a kit um, through multi-drive. So they also have the GVM upgrade with the true tracker, which comes with your terrain tamer parabolics. You can yep. get that in um, your standard leaves, standard leaves and a higher GVM, yep. or you can get the parabolics, parabolics. with 3780. Yep. Um, and then it all comes in the kit. And obviously Terrain Tamer, I mean, we all know that gear, it's good stuff. Yep. Um, they've been around uh, in the game for a long time. So, so the yeah. only thing just to touch on is the 76 series is the only one that doesn't have a bolt-on uh, track correction. Because, so they've got a different diff. It's yeah, the 76 duty, is a lighter it? diff, it's yeah, not a laminated lighter. diff. Yeah. So, but again, they still have, multi-drive still have a kit, a system for a 76. And I reckon the 76 is one of the ones that's going to benefit the most because of the short wheelbase. Yeah. So I yeah. think you'll feel that a yeah, lot more. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. So they do have a full a full diff replacement in their system. And again, it's it's awesome. Fantastic. All right, well, we'll um, cue the music and <laughs> get back into this side. Next um, bit. Yeah, that side's just being finished now. And it's just putting the wheel back on. Cool. So, yeah, very exciting. Thanks for today, mate. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All right, morning everyone. It is day two here at Project Overlander in Sydney. Um, so today, very exciting. We've got the GVM upgrade going on from Terrain Tamer. So this is the 3780 GVM with the parabolic leads. Uh, so really keen to see how this sits. It's part of the kit with the multi-drive true tracker that you can get so you can get all the GVM upgrade and everything in one. Um, yeah, this kit comes with the Nitro Charger shocks from Terrain Tamer, so uh, really keen just to sort of see how it rides and feels on the road. Very excited. Uh, Aaron's done an awesome job. Uh, he's the in-house mechanic here, and he's just done all the brake lines up this morning. Um, it's looking really good, really nice job. So yeah, we'll crack on. So we've got parabolics here and we've got the stock leaves out. One thing that's kind of struck me is there's kind of more steel in the in the stock. There's sort of it's not simpler the parabolics, but there's sort of you know not too much to it. But they look like a really well-made unit. Um, so really excited to get them in and give them a go. And obviously we've just got the shockies here, nitro charger shocks. Obviously got the stock, got the train tamer one here, and. You can see the difference straight away. This is a bigger shock. Um, so yeah, really keen to get it all in.
parabolics are in, the rear shockies are in as well. Um, yeah, so it's going really well. Sway bars is going in now. And then we can, well, sorry, not we. Aaron can get started on the front uh, with the coils and the shockies there. So pretty exciting, parabolics look great. Um, can't wait to see how it sits when it goes on the ground. It's gonna be interesting, even though the car has no weight in it, because they're parabolics and they're sort of adaptive with what weight uh, is actually put in the car, then, yeah, it might actually sit really well empty. So we'll see how it looks. All right, down the floor here, we just got the sway bar. Yeah, well, Aaron's got the sway bar. I keep saying we, I haven't done a thing. <laughs> um, Aaron's got the, the sway bar here, so here's the stock. Here's the one you get with the GV upgrade from Terrain Tamer. It's just a lot thicker, bigger, heavier duty piece of gear, so looks good. Another bit of gear that's just turned up to the workshop here is the Safari Armax Snorkel. Um, went with this one because I actually just like the way they look, pretty much. Um, there's heaps of options out there, stainless steel, um, heaps of other brands do them, but I like the Armax, sort of nice and simple, but I think it looks really tough. It's really nice and thick and it, and it works really well. Great, obviously, massive intake, so you know, great intake, um, especially. I will be doing a custom airbox down the line, so that'll just help the airflow and everything like that. And obviously, get all the other advantages with the snorkel. Obviously, raised air intake, out of the dust, water crossings, all that. Exciting. Well, the, the front is pretty much done. Oh, look at the car. Look how it's sitting. And after a big day of me watching, this fella do all the work. I've done at least the Australian thing and bought him a beer. Hey, I bought a couple of beers. Anyway. <laughs> Cheers. Anyway, we'll have a look at the car now. So yeah, she's um, obviously going to settle a bit more and it's got absolutely no weight in it, so it's sitting pretty perky, but it's screaming for some bigger tyres, I reckon. What do you reckon, Tabs? Sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching this first episode of the new Trooper build, everyone. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to follow along with the build as we have a lot more work happening to the Troopy. And remember, if you have an Overland build you need help with in and around Sydney, get onto Project Overlander. As you can see, those boys really know their stuff. So until the next one, cheers.